Um, Saturday night was the six month anniversary of Occupy Wall Street. Um, yeah. Six months of lots of stuff, struggle and building and learning and all kinds of things. Um, so we were in Zuccotti Park, Liberty Plaza, which is where it all started. Um, and we had 700, maybe more people there. So we thought, why should we go? We should just stay. Um, some people put up kind of a makeshift tent in the middle. We all know how afraid cops are of tents these days. And, um, and so it looked like they were gonna move in and try to clear the park. So we used some of our new um, trainings that we've been doing, which are based on radical clowning, um, which there, there are different commands that people call out. And then um, there are things like, we all jump up and down in a circle, and then we melt and all lie down on the ground. And what we were doing was we made a wall, which is like a soft block wall and got in rows and all sat down together. And then we were singing and chanting, mostly singing. And, um, and the cops came in and brutally grabbed people and you've probably were either there or saw videos of it. Um, and I was sitting with my friends and, um, and watched as the cops stomped on their faces and hit them and punched them and my friend that was right next to me who I was linked to, they pushed him down, so I went down with him. We were lying on the ground and they, this one guy had his knee on his face and just knelt on his face. For a long day I was lying with that friend in Union Square and I had this awful flashback of that, of that cop's knee on his face. And so um, that's kind of what people are going through right now. We've been having healing circles and um, trying to heal one another from that attack so that we can get ready for the next one. Um, so, uh, let's see. They arrested us and they put us on an MTA bus. They put 25 of us on an MTA bus. Um, and I talked to the driver, because we were in that bus for like three hours. Um, I talked to the driver, I was like, is this really what you want to be doing right now? And he just just kind of like, don't talk to me right now, you know? And I was like, are you coming out with us on May Day? And he smiled. Um, so we're gonna try to do some building with TWU around that um, and see how that goes. And talk to Tony this morning and some of us are gonna go to the, uh, the hearing on Wednesday and say, you assholes, let the NYPD put us in, a, in one of your buses Give the TWU a good contract, <laughs> something like that. Um, <laughs> so, on the bus, there was a lot of community. There was a lot of checking in with each other and helping each other out. With you know, our ha our hands were cuffed, so you know, helping each other do things with our cuffed hands. Um, one guy was just they took him on the bus and just dropped him on the floor, and he was just kind of stuck on the floor of the bus the entire time. Um, one guy, they took him in like a battering ram and they hit his head on every pole as he went down the bus and then took him up the stairs, you know, to the back of the bus and the new buses and just slammed his head into every stair and then just wedged his head into one stair and pushed. Um, so, you know, there was a lot of that as we were getting on the bus. But then once we were on it, the cops just kind of ignored us. So we sang songs and tried to take care of each other and then we got to the 20th precinct and the women were put into a cell. There were 21 women in a six by 10 cell, just kind of sitting on each other um, for many hours, including the woman who was really brutally beaten. Um, and you know, some of you may have seen her on Democracy Now! today. Um, so she was there and we just tried our best to make her comfortable in that, in that tight space, but it was kind of impossible. She was there for about six hours before they took her to the hospital. Um, so um, the guys were in another cell and we could hear them if we yelled. And so we were mic checking each other and singing songs back and forth to each other. 
But what really started the drumming, because there was a lot of drumming, was the guys told me there was a, there was a young black man in a cell close to them who wasn't um, an Occupy Wall Street related arrest. He'd been there for 24 hours and he hadn't gotten any food at all. And so he was like really desperate for food and was banging on the door, banging for food. And at first they were like kind of annoyed that he was banging so much and then they're like, wait a second, we should bang too. So everyone, all the men, just banged and banged and banged on, and like came up with some really awesome rhythms that we could hear from ourselves. So then we started banging. And there were several hours there in the middle of the night where it was just very musical. Um, we came up with the song, You Ain't Nothing But a Bad Cop, to the tune of Hound Dog. Um, and um, at one point, they took all of the women out of the cell except for me and one other woman and took them to Central Booking. So we were just there alone, the two of us, and something happened, I forget what, there were a lot of things that the cops did that made me really angry in that time, but something happened that made me really angry and I just started singing You Ain't Nothing But a Bad Cop so loud and banging with all my might and all my heart. And, um, and at the end of the song, the sergeant rushed in holding a taser and ran up to me with the taser and um, there was this resounding round of applause from the men's cell, um, hooting and hollering. And I was like, they loved me. And he was like, do I need to tase you and bring you to Mel uh, Bellevue Psych Ward? But then I mic checked. I mic checked the men's cell and said, mic check, this, t this sergeant just came in here with a taser and threatened to bring me to Bellevue. And they mic checked it back and he left. So, yeah. So there was some really good solidarity and then when we got to central booking there, was, there were more than a hundred people outside doing jail support at that time and around when the courts closed at 11.30 and it was, became clear that most of us were going to be spending the night again because um, this was the second night, um, we, heard, we heard shouting and we couldn't make it out but they were having a march around the jail, around central booking. Um, and there was a jail support march that we could hear. And that was great. <laughs> then they took 18 of us and they released us at 3 a.m. in the dead of night, right after jail support left, because they'd been there for 24 hours, you know. And so everyone was like, mm, guess we'll go home and get some sleep. No one's getting out till the morning. And so jail support left, and they let us out the back door at 3 a.m. And we got out, and all of our charges were dropped, the 18 of us. Um, and our cases were dismissed. And we just kind of stood there for a minute, like, what to do? And we decided that half of us would go up to Union Square because we, well, there was one guy there that just happened to be there. He had a phone and half a bottle of water and one cigarette, and that tied us over for a little while. And um, he told us about the new occupation at Union Square, which, would ha which had happened when the brutal arrests happened. Everyone was so pissed, they went up to Union Square and didn't leave. And so half of us went up there and joined that occupation. A few people went home and went to sleep, which is understandable. And the rest of us stayed down and decided to be jail support until jail support got there, because what if they let out anyone else in the middle of the night? So yeah, then we just sat outside for several more hours, and in the morning, everyone else showed up. And it turned out that while we were in jail, the people on the outside had been planning and they'd already planned the press conference on Tuesday um, in solidarity with a lot of other communities that have been subject to police brutality. And that was already pretty, pretty solidly planned and th they were in the planning stages for tomorrow, for Saturday's action, which was so great. I mean, it felt so good to get out of jail and see that people had already been organizing and already been planning something around this. And it's about time for Occupy Wall Street to really be standing up against police brutality and to really be joining the call for Ray Kelly to resign. <laughs> so um, the next night, or well Tuesday night, in Union Square there was more brutality. Um, there were women that were in a soft block, it was almost all women, like this, around the park. And the police came and grabbed their breasts, and moved them by grabbing their breasts. And, um, and many of you probably saw on Democracy Now! this morning that, that um, Cicely has a bruise, a handprint bruise, on her breast. So this is kind of gendered violence that we're seeing also. Um, and then also that night, there was a female medic 
and they knocked her to the ground and she was unconscious and then they trampled her and they broke her foot. And so, um, you know, I mean, I don't really, I don't need to tell you guys um, the analysis that's coming out of this, but it is. There's an analysis coming out of this with Occupy Wall Street that this is systemic, this police violence is systemic, that it's a systemic system against people of color and against poor people and against those who stand up and call it out. And so um, tomorrow, well, and then of course, um, the protest yesterday in, Sol or no, the day before, I'm kind of losing track of time. Wednesday, Trayvon, Trayvon Martin was enormous and amazing. And that, I mean, the masses this time, you know, which like a lot of the time these Occupy Wall Street demonstrations are not. Um, but this was really the people of New York came out um, in solidarity with Trayvon Martin's family and with other, with, with other victims of police violence and I mean Trayvon, Trayvon Martin that wasn't exactly police violence but it's become so and, um, and so um, you know that was really really amazing because um, the people took the streets all over the city and there was nothing the cops could, cops could do about it because the energy was just so enormous. Um, and so tomorrow uh, we're planning um, a rally at Liberty Plaza at noon. Um, Jatik Reed's mother is coming to speak along with some other speakers. It's not going to be really speaker heavy, um, but um, we're going to have a rally in Liberty Plaza and then march up to Union Square. We're going to pass 100 Center Street, one police plaza. We're going to pass City Hall, the Federal Building, and the ICE Detention Center. Um, and we've reached out to a lot of different people, and the message is Ray Kelly must go and stop police violence against all communities. <laughs> so that's about it. I'll stay as long as I can, so hopefully I'll catch some of the uh, discussion. And thank you so much for letting me come and talk about this.